Okay, so I'm in Pereira, Colombia right now, and I just found this balcony um, at this mall here. Uh, I'm filming on the side because, you see, you can't really see my face. You know, the angle, I got that, that's why I'm using this angle, but here's the view. Um, it's some, I'm at some random balcony it's some mall, I don't know. It seems like people just hang out here, I don't know. Well, in this video, I'll be talking about budgeting for long-term travel and how the majority of people actually pay for it. Um, just to be clear, some some people, there's a, there's a lot of different ways that people do it. Um, Obviously, the, the ideal situation is you have a job where you work online. Um, a lot of people can't pull that off. Um, but, but maybe it's easier to do than a lot of people think. I'm not entirely sure. So, I'm going to tell you how in practice most people actually do it. Um, most people don't have an online job. Most people work ordinary jobs and they basically save a lot of money. Um, and then when they travel, they are really careful with their money. Um, I've come up with a bunch of different strategies, techniques that I've used, that other travelers use. Um, the first one I've noticed um, and I, I, ha I sort of half do this. I don't do it entirely. Um, this is living like a monk. It's actually kind of the general guiding principle for all the other principles that I recommend. Um, so monks, they have barely any material possessions. They often share accommodation with other monks. They don't eat very much. Um, they're usually vegetarians. Uh, this is something that, you know, the, a lot of the travelers I've met who travel on very close to zero dollars, they're usually uh, vegetarians or they eat vegetarian most of the time, and I'll, I'll explain that later. Um, okay, so what did I say? I said, yeah, barely, barely any material possessions. They walk long distances right? Uh, live in kind of cramped accommodation. They don't always require large beds. They'll usually share bathrooms, maybe share rooms. Um, they'll wear the same clothing for long periods of time. They're in, in South America, particularly in Bolivia and Peru, there are huge groups of Argentinian, Chilean, and to a lesser extent, Colombian, Paraguayan, Uruguayan, Brazilian backpackers. And a lot of them are actually able to travel on zero dollars. Like they leave with, they leave with almost no money and they end up, you know, basically having a, a net balance of zero. They don't work online. Um, they they kind of just hustle on the street. So of course there are, there are a, a large group of, there are plenty of Argentinian and, and Chilean travelers who are very extraordinarily wealthy. So don't, don't get that the wrong way. But these are usually university students and you'll see them all around South America. They'll be um, selling things on the side of the road, juggling knives. I just saw a girl juggling knives on the street. She could be a local but I, I suspect that she's Argentinian. Um, juggling, you know, juggling like big knives. Uh, they'll sell illegal things. Um, they'll sell little arts and crafts. Uh, I, I met a Chilean Argentinian couple who were clowns. Like they would, they would do these little shows where they would act as clowns and then people would pay them, you know, for entertainment. Um, so it may or may not be a good idea to do this kind of thing because it's kind of illegal 
like the the people I know who do this they are always kind of half having trouble with the law and they're always moving to new cities because it's sort of unclear whether it's legal it's not always legal it's kind of legal and sometimes one local government will have a problem okay let's let's hope that we're lucky here um, A lot of people think that vegetarians have to have to actually spend more, but my experience is that this isn't true at all. And there are a lot of people who, who live, not a lot of people, like a small number of people, you can find their videos online, they show how they, either even in a Western country or developed country, and they'll spend one or two dollars a day on food, and these people aren't eating meat. Um, the trick is basically uh, to have some kind of cooking appliance and to survive mostly on um, rice, potatoes, or other, other uh, staple foods. So you don't go out. Um, and like, I don't do this. Like I, I eat a lot of meat. Um, I do go out, but I'm sure I spend a lot less than the average traveler. Uh, I do eat much more basic foods, but these people who, who, who travel on close to zero dollars, they usually primarily eat staple foods. So not very many vegetables and not very much meat. Um, I, I met this guy Raktaka and he was, I don't think that's his real name. I think that's more like his Rastafarian name or something. Um, he's a Colombian guy and he had been traveling around South America uh, for 10 years and he did it all on net zero so he he would make as much as he would spend he was maybe probably 510 but must have weighed about 110 pounds like, like totally thin uh, not an ounce of muscle or fat like pretty much just totally thin um, and he would always get at me for not eating my vegetables so <laughs> Like we'd be eating and the guy would, he would always say that I ate too much meat and I was, it was so unhealthy and he'd be like, you got to eat your vegetables first. And you give me a hard time. Well, that like, he's a perfect example of that. He, he camped. I, I met him, um, first time I met him in this town called the Semipata in Bolivia. Uh, and then I met him later in uh, Santa Cruz de la Sierra. Uh, and he would camp like about 500 meters out of the town and he, he had like all this cooking all these cooking appliances so he, he was like imagine how little money like this guy's barely eating anything i wouldn't be surprised if he was traveling on maybe two to three usd a day because what's he spending money on he wasn't paying for his campsite of course when he got to santa cruz he spent a lot more money uh, still less than ten dollars a day, but he had to actually—he was actually staying at a hostel. But he can earn a lot more in a bigger city. Um, it's obviously, on the one hand, it's harder to find campsites. So yeah, of course, it's it's harder to find campsites in a bigger city. But he made it work because he could earn more. <laughs> Um, so, some principles on how you can save money at home. When I first started traveling, I earned just over minimum wage. And if you've ever been to Victoria, Canada, you know that this is a really, really, really expensive, not really expensive, but it's very expensive for its size. For a city with 300,000 people, it's probably on par with uh, a Western city with maybe 5,000 people. I mean, five, 5 million, right? Um, or at least 2 million. So you know that it's, it's really hard to live on minimum wage in Victoria, but I was able to save maybe, I think about, I was saving about 40 to 50% of how much I was earning. So how did I do that? Well, I lived in, um, uh, I had a small room in a house. Uh, I biked to work and then I went and got the cheapest possible car I could find. Um, I would, I didn't go out at all. I think I might have gone out to eat. I think my parents took me out a couple times, but um, 
I think I went out to eat maybe once or twice for the entire year. Uh, I'd occasionally buy myself a coffee or something, but but really I wasn't. Um, I was saving pretty much every dollar I earned. Uh, pretty much every dollar I didn't. I didn't. Um, I didn't really need. Absolutely need. So I was going extreme bare bones. I'd work out in my backyard instead of uh, going to the gym, so I didn't have a gym pass. Um, I didn't have a cell phone. No, no, I didn't have a smartphone. I just had a flip phone. Um, and I would take on like side gigs, like I would walk dogs, and I did some other stuff. Uh, and I was actually able to afford six months of travel after a year. And that's working minimum wage. Like that is, I don't recommend that. I think that that's stupid. Like I can't, you shouldn't be working minimum wage, but I didn't have a better option. Maybe you don't have a better option. Um, in retrospect, I could have gotten a job teaching English in Korea because I, I had a degree. There's a lot of stuff I could have done. I could have um, worked commercial fishing or something. Um, but anyways, I, I did do that and then, and then I uh, managed to get some salary increases and my situation was better after that. But some other, way, some other points for budgeting. Um, you you want to find the cheapest grocery store in your city. Or you want to go somewhere like uh, Walmart, somewhere where prices are really cheap. Um, in Victoria, there was this one, there's one grocery store uh, that is crazy cheap. So I'd always go there. And then you want to know where all the deals are, like at the different stores. Um, so I guess you want to um, think like a grandma, think like, okay, that, that's not very nice. Th think like a retiree. Think like a retiree who, you know, collects coupons and knows where all the deals are and everything. And then, because uh, they have, you know, they're not working all day. And then think like a monk. Um, I actually wrote a, another article uh, that's on the same, same subject and I go into more detail with more specific recommendations, um, a lot of the things that I've done, things that I kind of have to, I don't always do. That's another thing is, is you don't have to go as extreme as I say because I don't go that extreme and I've been traveling for four years. Um, so just like use whatever techniques you can fit into your lifestyle, whatever techniques you actually need to do um, to make it happen with your, with your salary. Everyone has a different salary. Maybe, maybe you're earning six figures, but there are people who earn six figures. There are people who earn, you know, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year who don't save a penny. They, they might even be in credit card debt. Um, so figure out what you need to do um, with your earnings uh, to pay for your travel and, and also whatever your saving goals are. If you're trying to save, you know, 10% of your money and put that away, then you can save an additional 30% and put that into traveling or what it, you know, how does, how does it work into your lifestyle and your goals? But I basically give a ton of recommendations in my article, uh, which should allow just about anyone who's from a developed country who doesn't have kids and doesn't have a crazy amount of debt to afford traveling for at least a couple of years. Um, so long as they're willing to do what it takes. And even if you are, you know, even if you, if you do have kids, you do have a lot of debt and you are from a developing country, people pull it off. Like I've met people who, who really have some crazy stories who've, who've really met, like, like all the guy, like the guy from Colombia who traveled for 10 years and you know, really, really was coming from a, uh, uh, not a strong economic background, right? He doesn't, he's, he had almost no wealth in his family. Uh, at least I, I think so. I don't think he had much, I don't think he came from money. Um, so do, what, do whatever it takes. Uh, if you find this video interesting, subscribe and hit the notification bell.